Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Slovenia once again, and that of course means that we're going to take a look at yet another of the beers from the latest instalment of the Davor box. So once again, a huge shout out and thank you to Davor Siric, one of my long-term subscribers, officially my Slovenian beer mule as well actually. He's responsible for the vast majority of the Slovenian beers that you see reviewed here on the channel. Really, really nice guy, very knowledgeable about beer and uh, it's been great to have him uh, supplying me with all these really interesting beers from Slovenia over the years. Um, Slovenia of course is mainly known for its wine but there does seem to be a bit of an unwritten rule in Europe these days that if you're a good wine country, when you try your hand at craft beer, you are going to be pretty good at that as well. And Slovenia is certainly no exception to that rule, as I've kind of seen over the last few years. But yeah, Davor has sent me some really interesting beers from Slovenia. The standard is very high in my opinion and I do wish that Davor would actually start his own channel. He's very very knowledgeable. He loves Belgian beers as well. He sent me a few interesting Belgian things over the years as well and uh, you can see him appear every so often on some of my live streams. I think he's been on about three of them so far if I remember rightly um, but uh, yeah hopefully in 2021 we can get down to Slovenia finally and have a little look around film some out and about videos some meet the brewery segments and stuff like this. Davor knows a hell of a lot of people so fingers crossed we can make that happen actually so um, yeah we'll see hopefully Covid permitting that whole thing can come to fruition but again a huge thank you to Davor for making this review possible and I hope that you guys watching in different parts of the world enjoy learning a little bit about Slovenian craft beers here on the channel so yeah let's go for it with this one then so um, this beer comes to you from another brewery that I've never tried anything from before I think in the first Davor box that I had a couple of years back maybe 2016 I think I think Davor actually sent me one of these beers but unfortunately it died en route so it's good that we're finally getting around to reviewing something from these guys because they are from what I understand one of the more established craft breweries in Slovenia. So for this review then we are going to go to a little place called Kamnik which is to the north of the capital city Ljubljana getting towards the northern border of the country actually and we're going to have a look at my first beer from Pivovarna Maligrad. So this particular beer is called the Black Magic Woman. It comes in at 6% ABV and this one is being described as an India Black Ale. So basically a black IPA, Cascadian Dark Ale, however you want to refer to it. And um, yeah, hopefully this turns out to be another interesting beer. So I think this is my third black IPA that I've reviewed from Slovenia so far. We've definitely had one from Reservoir Dogs and one from Pivovarna Tectonic as well. I can't remember if we've had any others beyond that actually. Um, I, think, I think this one probably is number three actually but I do enjoy this style I always tended to enjoy the imperial ones more to be honest with you but I have found in more recent reviews that some of the the lower alcohol ones tend to be quite nice as well I do like a little bit of the sweetness in the uh, in the malt base from a black IPA so fingers crossed this one has a little bit of that in it but I'm sure knowing the Slovenian beers as I do I think this one should be quite an interesting one at least so yeah nice to do my first review from people from Maligrad these guys are one of the more well-known Slovenian craft breweries, very, very well respected. And again, thank you to Davor for making this review possible. And I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So, um, yeah, anyway, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I'll hopefully be able to do in the future from Pivovarna Maligrad. This is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers, as I mentioned. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Slovenian beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to quite regularly at the moment because we've still got quite a few of the Davor beers left, and it will continue to be added to regularly over the coming years. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Pivovarna Maligrad then, on to my brewery notes. And I will apologise in advance for any bad Slovenian pronunciations in this video. So anyway, Pivovarna Maligrad was founded back in 2014 by Anja and Urban Florancic. So, um, these guys are based in Kamnik, which as I mentioned is a bit to the north of Ljubljana. 
And apparently Urban and Anya were interested in being self-sufficient through things like growing their own food and various other activities. But one of the things that particularly interested Urban was brewing his own beer. So he started brewing beer in his apartment and then in his mum's garage and Anya kind of gradually began to join in. So they, event they eventually ended up spending most of their free time brewing beer and putting most of their disposable income into this hobby to buy new equipment and things. And they ended up home brewing for about three years in total. And a number of their friends were buying their beer from them and they actually started selling it out of their garage as well to just members of the public and at one stage when they were at their peak of their home brewing activities they were producing around 1,000 litres per month out of this garage brewery which is pretty impressive actually for such a small operation but when they got to this point though they agreed that they either had to go into business properly or cut the scale and just brew a small amount for themselves every month thankfully they chose the former so they managed to raise 20,000 euros and they bought a 200 litre brewery and then rented out a space in Kamnik and in this space they managed to brew around 3,000 litres per month and over the coming years they continued to grow. So from 2014 until about 2017 or so, they were brewing in this little space in Kamnik, from what I understand. Later on, though, they, in 2018, they moved to um, Schmarza, which is just to the south of Kamnik. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But they moved into a building that had previously been occupied by the Yugoslav army. So they occupied the first floor of this building, and a few months after moving in, the restaurant that was on the ground floor vacated the premises, and so they used this space to open up their tap room, which is called um, the To. Tochnika uh, uh, Maligrad. Hopefully, again, that's right, but basically, that means the Maligrad Tavern. Um, but the brewery equipment comes from Bruix in um, uh, Tronomail, again, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, Tronomail. I think, the name of the city, um, but they started off with a 900 litre brew kit and then they've upgraded to a 1700 litre brew kit in 2019 and now they're brewing in excess of 100,000 litres of beer per year. But they also have a small pilot brewery for making experimental batches and as of December 2020 when I'm filming this review for you, they've produced around 55 different kinds of beer in total according to Untapped. So the name Maligrad is taken, um, it's taken from a local kind of monument actually, but if you translate it into English it means Little Castle, but the Maligrad itself is a site in Kamnik that is, is a complex composed of the remaining buildings of a larger castle which dates back from the late 11th or early 12th century, they're not quite sure from what I understand, but apparently the St. Um, Eligius Chapel as part of this complex is one of the most important Slovenian medieval monuments, which is pretty cool, and if you look at the pictures of it, if you just type in Maligrad on uh, Wikipedia it will show you a picture of this um, St. This uh, Eligius Chapel and uh, the other tower that's in there as well. It looks pretty nice actually, but it's just on the edge of the Slovenian section of the Alps. I believe they call them the, the Kamnik Savinja Alps in, in Slovenia actually. Um, but the label artwork that you'll see on these beers is designed by uh, Ljubo Bratina and the character that you'll find on these is Veronica who is the wealthy countess of Maligrad and there's a story that three brothers who had just become priests went to her for some money to ask to start their own church I think it was a Presbyterian church it said um, but she said she would rather turn into a snake than give them money for the church and so she started to turn into a snake from the waist down and she kind of stayed like that she was cursed essentially um, but they say that she still haunts the Maligrad and now you'll find her on the people of on that Maligrad beer labels. So yeah, there you go. So um, yeah, that's all the information I can really tell you about Pivovarna Maligrad for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, then you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers and stuff that they've done. And uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about the Maligrad or Kamnik itself, just do a wee search and have a read at Wikipedia, of course. It's a very good resource that way. But um, yeah, that's all I'm going to tell you for the moment. Let's have a little look at this beer then and have a taste of it. I'm curious to see how this one turns out. As I say, always nice to learn a little bit about different places and different countries. That's one of the reasons I like doing the history of the breweries and things like that. But there you can see there is um, Veronica playing with her tail. There you can see the Black Magic Woman and uh, yeah, Maligrad actually. I'm not sure if um, this is meant to infer that Veronica is um, you know, she used to do a lot of black magic and things. I don't know too much about the story of that, only the, the stuff that I could find in the, uh, the, the newspaper article. 
that uh, that I managed to find on this brewery. But yeah, this is a half litre bottle. Um, it's got a plain white bottle cap on it. I'm not sure exactly how much Davor paid for this one. Um, I just sent him. I just asked him how much the whole thing cost. Actually, I maybe should actually ask him about the individual prices of the beers because I think that's a kind of interesting bit of information to put in these. Um, in these things as well. So maybe in the next Riku and Davor boxes and stuff like that, I'll ask people about the, I'll ask uh, folk about the individual cost of the beer, because that's always an interesting comparison as well for people in different parts of the world. But yeah, half litre bottle this one, 6% India Black Ale, Black IPA, however you want to call it. So yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. Very, very curious to see what this one has in store for us. So yes. This should be pretty good. So yeah, it's six percent. Yeah, this is a fairly kind of standard percentage for a black IPA. Sometimes they can be six point five percent. As I mentioned earlier, it used to be that um, I always enjoyed the imperial black IPAs rather than the the kind of single black IPAs a bit more. I always like a little bit of sweetness in the malt base in this style because I think that just balances a little bit better. But yeah, that's a little more than half of the beer in the glass for the moment so that should do us for our look at the aroma and the first tasting and stuff like that so yeah maybe maybe, maybe near two thirds actually we've got in the glass but um, yeah this one looks pretty nice actually and pretty much what you would expect from a black IPA now the beer is to you guys on the camera this one's going to appear like a lovely dark ebony rosewood colour but if you put the light through this it actually comes across as a very very dark sort of ruby it's got a really nice dark ruby kind of tint to it, this one. You can see the beer is poured with a solid finger of a frothy, I would say very, very light beige head. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, quite a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. But I mean, overall, it does look um, very, very nice, actually. I do like how this one um, goes together. So, um, yeah, just surprised at how red this one is. It looks, I don't know if it would have been filtered, actually. It, didn't, it certainly didn't look uh, madly clear in the bottle when we had a look at it but of course with the black IPAs you would expect these to be more of um, you know the kind of west coast sort of natural haze and in fairness when you shine the light through it you can see that the red tint does have a little bit of that sort of uh, natural haze to it but yeah it certainly looks um, like a very very nice black IPA this one or India black ale, Cascadian dark ale, whatever you want to call it there's a few different synonyms for uh, this different for this beer style actually so yeah let's have a closer look at the aroma of this one then and see how we get on I'm very very curious to see um, what this beer has uh, has in store for us ooh that does smell pretty nice actually so um, straight away with this beer you do get a really nice little malty you get a nice little bit of a malty hit to it. It's got a lovely bit of a bready backbone in there. I almost get a wee bit of a kind of German type rye bread out of this one. It has got a, a kind of brown bready backbone to it. Um, yeah, it really does have that. Yeah, you can smell. It's got a little, I, I do wonder if there's maybe a little bit of carafa. Um, you know, Vireman Carafa or something in this, because you do get a little bit of that toasty, well-fired bread crust, but it doesn't come across, um, the roasted malts in this one, the black malts, if you like, they don't come across as overly harsh, so that makes me think that there's not um, black malts in this one. I do wonder if this is some kind of Carafa malt that's in here. Um, I don't know, I know a fair amount about the Slovenian hops, um, but I don't know all that much about the... Um, I don't know all that much about the Slovenian malt, so it could be that there is a Slovenian malt variety in this one, otherwise I'd guess they'd probably use Austrian malts or probably German. So I do wonder if there is a little bit of carafa in this one. There's just something about the aroma of this beer is telling me there's one of the carafas in here. But yeah, you get a little bit of that toasty, well-fired bread crust sort of thing in there. You get quite a nice little bit of... Um, you do get quite a nice little bit of a sort of brown rye bready kind of character to it as well. But there's a fair amount of brown sugar in this one. I will say that there's a fair amount of brown sugar in this beer. You get a nice really oily um, caramel note in this one. It does come across as a wee bit toasted as well. But it's quite a bright caramel at the... Um, it is quite a bright caramel at the... Um, at the same time. So yeah, lovely sweet caramel on the malt base in this one. This is definitely one of the sweeter um, single black IPAs that I would say I've come across so far. Sweet caramel in there, a little bit of a McVitie's digestive biscuity kind of thing in there. We touch of a toastiness to the brown sugars as well, but you also, um, yeah, you've also got a nice little bit of a kind of brown bready, brown rye bread sort of thing in there, and also 
a little bit of um, a little bit of a toasty well fired bread crust kind of thing as well. So the malty base of this beer, I think, is um, is really very nice. Actually, I think this is a very very interesting one in that sense. So um, yeah, the malty backbone of this beer comes across very very nicely. As I said, one of the sweeter uh, single black IPAs that I can think of that I've come across so far. But I do remember saying this about a few other Slovenian beers that the Slovenians do tend to like um, a sort of slightly sweeter malty backbone and also a bit more of an oily fruit. That seems to be a trend that I've picked up in quite a few. Um, uh, quite a few um, Slovenian beers thus far, but yeah, on the um, the hoppy side of things, then this again is very very interesting. Um, I would suspect um, this one has Cascade in it, just going from the aroma. Um, but the other thing is, I know that Styrian Fox is quite a good one to use in um, in black IPA, so maybe they are using one of their own hops in this. Um, so maybe there could be a little bit of Styrian Fox in this. I know that Styrian Fox can give you some lovely red fruity characters. In, um, in dark beers, so and some of the the, the kind of the notes from the green side of the beer make me think there might be a Slovenian hop in this one as well. So on the um, the the hoppy side of things, then you do get a little bit of earthiness in this one. There is a nice little bit of floral aromaticity to the beer, and you've also got a little bit of a softer kind of grassiness in this one as well. But the um, the fruity character to this uh, to this one, I think, is. Um, it's very very nice. You've got a little bit of that soft kind of figgy kind of thing to it, um, which I think is one of the things of Cascade. But you do have a wee bit of a sharper raisiny note, maybe a wee touch of plum. And to be honest, I almost get with this one, um, I almost get just a wee hint of a kind of orangey sweetness out of this. I do get a little bit of an oily orangey character um, out of this one, which is um, which is definitely quite interesting. So yeah, kind of oily plum, nice little bit of a sweet kind of figgy note to it, a little bit of a sharper raisin, and a wee kind of orangey hint to it as well actually, which is kind of interesting. I would love to know what hops are in this one. It wasn't actually listed, I don't think, in any in any of the places that I could find. So um, yeah, I would be curious to know what hops are actually in this beer. But uh, yeah, it's always fun to play guess the hops with these. Um, but yeah, take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck into it. But uh, it comes across very nicely, I have to say. We're going to have a taste of this beer now then. So this one is the Black Magic Woman, um, an India Black Ale as they're calling it, coming in at 6% ABV. Black IPA, Cascadian Dark, whatever you want to say. But I'm sure this one will be quite a nice beer actually. So yeah, let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skol, Nazdravia. Oh yeah, that is quite nice actually. Um, yeah, it's quite an easy, it's quite an easy drinking one that actually. Um, yeah, that's another really really solidly done. Um, it's another really really solidly solidly done black IPA. Um, I think that when Davro and I were chatting about what to put in the next box, actually, I think um, I told him that I wanted to try something from this brewery, and I told him just pick whatever one you like best. I think that's what da I think that's what he did with this one, or I think he suggested I think he suggested maybe two or three beers from these guys, and then I said the black IPA because I don't think we had a black IPA in the box other than this one. Um, so yeah, I'm glad we did get this one. This comes across quite nicely, but I will need to have a look at the other beers that they do, and um, and think about maybe what the next one would be. I need to try a few more lagers actually, from uh, from Slovenia going forward, like some pills and doppel box and stuff like that. That's something we need to look at a bit more. But um, yeah, this beer comes across really nicely. So thumbs up to uh, to Maligrad for this one. They've pulled off a solid solid beer here. So yeah, where to start with this one then? Um, it is kind of as you would expect from the the aroma profile. It's not it's not madly dissimilar from that. So straight away with this beer, you get a nice solid. Um, you do get a nice solid kind of bready backbone to this one. As you progress further into the aftertaste, you will get a little bit of the kind of toasty, well fired bread crust there. You can feel that in the middle of your palate, particularly going back towards the. Um, particularly going towards the kind of back third of the tongue you'll get a wee bit of that um you will get a little bit of that sort of um black malty 
you do get a wee bit of that kind of dryness out of the beer, to be fair. But then on top of that roasty, well-fired bread crust thing, you've got a nice kind of smooth layer of a sort of brown, bready character. I hesitate to say German rye bread, to be honest, because it's not quite as sweet, pardon me, as you might get from from kind of these kind of German rye bread sort of things. I always say German rye bread, but rye bread, you get that in Austria and, and uh, Czech and lots of other places in Central Europe. But, um, yeah, you do get a nice little bit um, of that kind of brown bready character out of this one, which is great. So, yeah, I like, I certainly like how this... Um, how this goes together in that sense too, um, but yeah, um, it does. This beer, def the malt base of this one, definitely does get a bit drier the further you go into the aftertaste. The other thing that I'm not that I would say about this one is that it's not quite as sweet as the aroma would have you believe. You do get a bit more brown sugar out of the aroma in this one than you do in the flavour. And then as you go onto the back third of your palate, you do get a more kind of roasty, toasty. Um, you do get a more kind of roasty, toasty element to it. And as I say, the breadiness just gets a little bit thicker as well and almost gets a wee bit more grainy. But then as you move further forward onto uh, into the uh, further forward on the palate, when you get into that middle third of your tongue, you can feel the flavour just kind of, uh, the, sorry, the, the thickness of the beer just drops off a little bit. And on top of that, in the middle third of your palate, you do get a wee bit more of a, um, you get a wee bit more, you do get a wee touch of that sweet kind of caramelly note in there and then as you move further out from the centre of your palate you start to get a wee bit of a kind of um, McVitie's digestive biscuit sort of thing out of the beer but you really don't get um, all that much brown sugar in this beer, definitely not. When the liquid's on your tongue yes you will get it but this beer is a bit more bready and a bit more toasty and things like that but it's not overly dry, sometimes black IPAs can be a little bit too dry, this one actually has a good balance and it leans more towards a kind of bready smoothness if you like, so yeah. Yeah, so I like um, I like how that side of this beer comes together as well. It does develop a bit more of a sweetness. You can feel the sweetness coming out of the the um, middle of the palate a little bit more the further you go into it as well. You do get a bit of toastiness to those brown sugars as well, which is um, which is quite good. So I do like that about this one. I have to say. Um, yeah, in terms of the hoppy side of things, then I don't think there's too much more to say about the. The malty side of this beer, to be honest, I think we've covered it quite in depth. In the back corners of the palate, you do get a little bit of a, a, a darker earthiness out of this beer, but as you move further forward along the sides of the palate, it gets a little bit more, the earthiness does spread forward a wee bit, it becomes a wee touch herbal, then as you reach the kind of front corners of the palate, it's distinctly more kind of floral and aromatic, if that makes sense, and then round the very front curve of the tongue, the beer is a bit lighter and uh, grassy, of course. Um, it does have a bit of an American... Uh, kind of thing to the, the hoppy side of the beer here, but there is also a wee bit of a kind of noble thing in there So I wouldn't be surprised if this, as I said earlier, is a Slovenian hop and um, some sort of American one Maybe there's a wee bit of, um, you know, Columbus or something like that in this along with a bit of Cascade and then perhaps like Styrian Fox or um, or something like that um, That would maybe be my guess in there. Summit could be the other one that would be in this actually, there are a few elements about the earthiness of this beer that makes me think Summit is a it could be a yeah a possible choice for it. But yeah, I like how that um, how it goes together. To be honest with you, um, the flavour profile of this beer is um, is pretty damn nice actually. Yeah. Mm. And the hoppy character goes together really well as well. Let's stick the rest of it in there. Very easy drinking beer, this one, for 6% as well. Just trying to be careful with this. We've got a big head on this now, so we have to be careful. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Perfect pour. Perfect pour. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, fruity side of things then. Let's have a little look at that fruity side of the beer. So yeah. As I always say to you, the fruity side of the beer comes out on that front third of your palate. And that's where you get that nice um, oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So when you take this beer in, you can feel there is a wee bit of a kind of red fruity just oiliness to the beer, which is great. So 
So yeah, when you take it in, you do get a wee bit, you get a wee touch of a raisiny sharpness to it, and you also get a bit of a plummy kind of oiliness. But then, and you'll get that towards the back of that front third of your palate, you'll get the kind of juicy plumminess sitting there. But yeah, the, the sort of sharpness, the kind of raisiny sharpness you get out of it just dissipates a little bit. And as you move further forward, it sort of becomes a bit more kind of juicy and figgy, if that makes sense. And then on the front um, third of your palate, on the, on the, sorry, on the very front kind of tip of that front third of your palate almost, you do get a bit more of the kind of oily um, kind of black currency character out of this one, but I do want to say there is a wee touch of orange um, in this beer actually. There is um, a nice little bit of an orangey kind of quality coming out of this one, which I find um, very, very interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, the. Um, the, the, the this one the, the fruity character in this is really interesting there is just something on that kind of front half of the front third of your tongue it just it, as I say it has a bit more of an oily character to it and there is just something about this beer that makes me want to say orange a wee bit of orange coming out of this one but you do get as I say as well on top of the orange you do get a little bit of a more kind of blackberry black currantly type flavour out of this which is really interesting so yeah the back juicy plums a little bit more of a kind of figgy note as you come forward there's a wee bit of raisiny sharps in the beginning or the orange and then a more kind of black currantly note um, coming out of the beer as well actually so I like how this one I do like how this one goes together in that sense it's a really quite uh, interesting beer from many different perspectives actually so um, yeah it does get a thumbs up from me this one, I do like this and it does make me very curious to try some of their other beers actually. I do enjoy a black IPA and this one has come across as quite, uh, as really quite nice. I would say this is definitely a little bit one of the more kind of bready ones and bread crusty ones that have come across actually. I expected this to be quite a bit sweeter going by the aroma but it was, it has turned out to be a bit more of a kind of bread crusty uh, leaning IPA this one. So yeah, it gets a thumbs up from me in that regard. I think this turned out very uh, nicely in that sense. So just slightly different from what I expected. But yeah, on the uh, mouthfeel side of things then, let's round off the review with that. Um, you know, I'd describe this beer as being at the kind of bottom end of mid-bodied. The carbonation does have a little bit of a kind of prickle to it, but overall it's quite smooth. This beer is quite slick and, you know, really easy to drink. In terms of bitterness and stuff, this one I think is probably about 60, 70 um, IBUs. You are getting a good little bit of bitterness from the hops in this one, but you're also getting a bit of it from the malt base as well. That kind of, this beer in the middle of your palate, it does certainly get drier and more kind of, it does get a little bit drier and more bitter in the middle of your palate the further that you go into the aftertaste. I should have said earlier with the fruit as well, you can feel a little bit of the kind of bread crust, you know, underneath that fruity part of the front third of your palate there. So yeah, this beer does develop a bit more of a kind of dry, bitter quality the further that you go into the um, into the aftertaste as well. So I think probably about 70 IBUs is a good um, is a good estimate for this one. This is my weakest part of reviewing, but I'm not such I'm not so good at kind of guessing the IBUs. I've got it kind of spectacularly wrong quite a few occasions. I don't know if it says on the uh, the bottle here actually, but uh, yeah, no, it doesn't. So yeah, I would guess about 70 IBUs with this one. But like I say, malt base has a bit of dryness to it. It does get a bit of smoothness on top of it and a little touch of sweetness. You've got a good little bit of bitterness from the hops as well. And then you've got some nice kind of juicy fruits to this one. I don't find the fruits overly oily. They are a little bit more wet and kind of juicy, to be honest with you. But pardon me, it has turned out to be a very nice black IPA this one and I'm glad I was able to review it for you here on the channel so yeah I hope that you guys have enjoyed this one so let's leave it at that for this this one was the Black Magic Woman coming in at 6% ABV India Black Ale Black IPA um, Cascadian Dark from Pivovarna Maligrad in um, in Kamnik to the north of Ljubljana the capital city of Slovenia so yeah meant to be a very beautiful little town maybe Davor and I can go and check out their uh, their tavern at some point that would be pretty cool actually to film an out and about video there maybe an interview with uh, Anya and Urban as well that would be pretty cool but um, yeah let's leave it at that for this one thank you again for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favourite beers are from people on Amali Grad I'm sure we'll return to these guys at 
at some point in the near future and do let me know some other Slovenian beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. So until the next time, Slange just now, this was the Black Magic Woman from Pivovarna Maligrad in Kamnik to the north of Ljubljana, kind of getting towards the northern part of the, the country actually. Thank you again to Dalver for this one and I'll catch you guys very soon. Slange out, Nastravia, and I'll see you guys later.